Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's my distinct honor and privilege to speak with you today. Please accept my thanks on behalf of the United States Air Force for the opportunity to address this August assembly of the International Association for the Advancement of Space Safety. I commend Dr. Tommaso Sogoba and the extraordinary hard work done by all to plan, prepare, and execute an event of this magnitude. It is with great regret that I cannot attend in person what is sure to be an amazing conference. The conference theme of safety is not an option is a perspective we in the safety world certainly appreciate and support. As the United States Air Force Chief of Safety, I'm responsible for, for providing safety policy, guidance, and recommendations for aviation, ground, space, weapons, directed energy, human factors, and emerging technologies across the entire Air Force. Our challenge is balancing two concepts that at times seem diametrically opposed, those of accomplishing the mission to support national security objectives, coupled with that of reducing the potential for mishaps. Yet over the years, we learned that those two objectives are actually complementary. The keys to success are the same in both efforts. Identify the hazards and threats, assess those hazards, and develop mitigating strategies, all the while keeping in mind and managing associated risks. Mission accomplishment is paramount to us. Nevertheless, we must apply safety processes from planning through execution. When done right, we're operating at minimum risk. While we cannot reduce that risk to zero, our intent is to accept no unnecessary risk and mitigate what remains to the best of our ability. As space safety professionals, you are well acquainted with operating day to day within acceptable risk. Every launch that achieves orbit without incident, every pass of the International Space Station overhead, and every successful recovery of a manned spacecraft is nothing short of a marvel. Space-based systems launch, orbit, and re-enter in an environment that is naturally hazardous. It's a testament to the efforts of this community and our partners around the globe that we remain focused on doing space business smartly and safely. When I took command of the Air Force Safety Center last fall, I was confident I understood safety from an air-centric point of view. I flew thousands of hours in peace and conflict and served in many leadership roles at multitude of levels across the Air Force. While performing my duties in all those roles, I benefited greatly from space assets. However, I must admit that I had much to learn about their operations. I felt my experience spanned the range of safety issues in every shape and form until I met the members of my space safety division who began my education and explained the challenges and issues associated with operating safely in and through space. My appreciation for the space safety community and the complexity and vastness of your tasks grows daily. Although there are many parallels across all of our safety disciplines, there are unique characteristics to the space environment that require additional consideration, study, and continued focus. As I reviewed the program for this conference, the foresight and ingenuity of the abstracts submitted for discussion both humbled and intrigued me. Of particular note is the number of papers devoted to space debris awareness and mitigation techniques. As most of you know, the United States Joint Space Operations Center, or JSPOC, at Vandenberg Air Force Base in California, detects, tracks, and identifies all artificial objects in Earth orbit. I stress the word artificial because it's an important distinction given the recent incident, for example, in Russia caused by a meteorite. This distinction is one that has our senior leaders reviewing requirements of civil and military organizations to determine how we incorporate tracking natural objects into our current way of accomplishing space situational awareness, or in the case of safety, space hazard awareness. In the meantime, the JSPOC collects and processes data from a worldwide network tracking more than 23,000 objects of 10 centimeters or larger. In the past, we operated with the big sky theory. We assumed the probability of collision was low due to the vastness of space and the distances between objects. 
However, the space environment continues to grow more and more congested, not just because of the increasing numbers of spacefaring nations, but also due to on-orbit collisions and breakups. The upward trend of artificial objects in space is alarming and skyrocketed over the past six years from just two major collisions in space. One of the incidents was the Iridium-33 collision with Cosmos 2251 in early 2009. The animation you're viewing is courtesy of the experts at Analytical Graphics Incorporated, and while many of you have probably seen it, I think it's a stark reminder of why our previous operating notion of big sky theory is no longer a valid course of action, or rather, inaction. Clearly, the collision in the video is not an everyday occurrence, but when you're in the business of space safety as we are, this is not something we can ignore. Of course, the initial impact is devastating to the primary vehicles. It is in the follow-on dispersion that is of such great concern to us in space safety. If we added representation for the estimated 500,000 objects that we currently do not track, the picture becomes even more frightening. As a pilot, I equate the video's space hazard example to that of a sudden appearance of multiple flocks of birds along my flight path. Where an aircraft can immediately maneuver to avoid these hazards, an on-orbit asset requires much more time to plan and execute a response. While Kepler's laws ensure orbiting objects are fairly predictable in their movement, their mere presence, in addition to the hundreds of thousands of untracked objects, complicates operations in space for everyone. As former space shuttle crews know, an object the size of a paint ship can potentially damage or destroy a spacecraft or asset, and we have little to no visibility on objects that small. I urge you to continue the intellectual discourse and practical application of research to reduce and mitigate the risks of on-orbit space debris and the risk it poses to our space-based assets. The price of the next mishap may be too high for anyone to pay. It is with this concept in mind that the United States Air Force remains dedicated to both principles of our 2010 national space policy and President Obama's pledge to cooperate across the international spectrum for the benefit of all spacefaring and space benefiting nations. We support the efforts of the International Agency Space Debris Coordinating Committee to provide guidelines and standards for the mitigation and the removal of debris. We also are committed to continue our relationship with the United Nations Committee on Peaceful Uses of Outer Space, or COPUS, and its efforts to encourage peaceful interaction and cooperation within the global commons. Last but not least, we applaud and support the endeavors of this conference's association and your constant interaction and dedication to the global awareness of space safety. You continue to champion the concepts of space safety internationally through events such as this, as a COPUS observer, and by developing educational opportunities such as the launch and reentry safety analysis course you are sponsoring. Within the Air Force, we advocate for advances in space situational awareness, which is foundational to space hazard awareness and feeds into the development of space hazard mitigation strategies and programs to safeguard our on-orbit assets. We seek to improve our ability to detect, track, and identify smaller objects with greater fidelity through updates to our existing space surveillance network and with future systems. We currently estimate over half a million untracked objects are orbiting our planet, and new programs like the Space Fence will provide a magnitude of more awareness. In this way, we have a better space traffic picture at any given time. However, as important as better data is, it can become a burden if we fail to improve our computational capabilities to support trending analysis and proactive mishap prevention. We're developing the JSPOC mission system, which will ingest the increased data provided by systems like the Space Fence, as well as improve the speed of calculations and processing to identify and avoid potential orbital collisions. In the future, debris removal may be the best hazard mitigation effort, but until then, we focus on identifying, predicting, and avoiding these on-orbit conflicts through improved awareness. 
Throughout our advocacy and acquisition efforts, we also maintain a continuous dialogue with our counterparts in the U.S. government and across the Department of Defense to ensure we provide appropriate safety policy, guidance, and training to our space operators and users, and proactive safety recommendations to the space enterprise at large. Consider how far we've come from the Sputnik launch on October 4, 1957, to the Curiosity landing on Mars last August. What was space fiction yesterday is reality today. The challenges we faced more than 50 years ago have grown increasingly complicated and will be even more complex in the days to come. Commercial space transportation and space stations, hybrid air and spacecrafts, steadily increasing space launches, the future at times seems daunting. Fortunately, as I considering, consider this gathering of brilliant men and women from all across the planet Earth, I'm filled with hope hope and confidence that will continue to forge a path safely and securely to the fascinating discoveries that await us just over the horizon. My entire space safety team remains committed to building the foundation for that tomorrow with you today. Thank you again for the opportunity to speak here today. Dr. Sagoba, and to you and your dedication in the arena of space safety, I also thank the ladies and gentlemen of this conference for your unswerving efforts for the promotion of space safety on and around our planet. Thank you for your time and enjoy your conference. Once again, my apologies for not being there in person.